Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is 8th of August 2018 but today we will discuss the important editorials of Indian Express from both 7th of August as well as 8th of August 2018. So before I start I want to request you if you are new to my channel then please go and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon so that whenever I upload a new video you will get the notification. So let's start with the first article. The first article it talks about the Assam National register citizens issue so basically we know many people they have been exempted from this national register of citizens but the government has promised that this is not the final draft and the issues will be looked at so right now the situation is calm but what lessons can we learn from this issue so this article talks about that so first of all some facts quickly as per 2011 language census the number of Assamese speaker that has decreased Decreased to 48% from 58% in 1991, while the Bengali speakers they have increased from 22% in 1991 to now 30 percent. So 2011 language census may ye pata chala ki Assam mein jo Assami speakers hain, wo decrease ho gaye hain, aur jo Bengali speakers hain, wo increase ho gaye hain. That shows us ki kuch migration definitely hua hai Bengali speakers ka. But the author says that Northeast already sits on many fault lines. And it is not in our nation's interest to sharpen this. So already both are fault lines exist curry and we or in could nahi banana see hame pata hai ki bot sare changes jo hai wo aye hai is region may northeast region may as a whole there have been social economic and political changes and that have resulted into migrations from the neighborhood. But again this region has also benefited from this entry of migrants right the northeast as a whole has benefited from this entry of both the capital and labor. So people who have been coming to this region, they have brought some capital, they have brought labor. So the region as a whole has benefited from this. And the author says that it is impossible that we can reverse the flow of history. Okay, We cannot go back and change the history and create an exclusive space for the indigenous people as, as they have been demanding. So it is possible that we go back in history and change it and indigenous people are very expressive. उनके लिए एक एक्सक्लूसिव स्पेस क्रिएट की जाए लेकिन उनको क्यों डर था इंडिजिनस पीपल को उनको ये डर था कि उनका जो कल्चर है उनकी जो लैंग्वेज है वो डिमिनिश होती जा रही है माइग्रेंट्स के आने से सो देयर वाज अ फियर ऑफ दिस कल्चरल एंड लिंग्विस्टिक ट्रेडिशंस बीइंग डोमिनेटेड बाय द माइग्रेंट्स सो दिस वाज द इशू बट द ऑथर सेस दैट कल्चर एंड लैंग्वेज नेवर नेवर दे एग्जिस्ट इन बैरियर्स दे नेवर एग्जिस्ट इन सिलोस इन फैक्ट कल्चर एंड लैंग्वेज दे बिकम रिचर एंड दे बिकम मोर complex under new influences and traditions just like in history when Mughals came the language the traditions the architecture it was influenced India's heritage became richer India's culture became richer so culture and language never can exist in barriers and they will become richer if migrants come and there will be of course some influences on the traditions and the language and the culture but that will actually make the region more richer and that is the essence of India okay it's like a salad bowl so every everyone they have their own identity but they are mixed together they are living together okay so culture and language the issue for which the indigenous people they were very worried about and that's why they were pitching that migrants they should be sent back so the author says that culture and language cannot exist alone they will become richer if these migrants they influence their tradition and culture now again what was happening in the past the british administrators they introduced measures like the inner line permit so inner line permit is basically a permission which you have to grant if you want to go to some protected place so britishers they consider it as a because they saw their commercial interest in it and they saw northeast as a frontier region so they started this inner line permit that if you want to uh, settle here or come here then you have to get the permission from the Britishers okay because their interests were involved in this region but again in recent years after independence our central government it has reimagined this situation it has reimagined Northeast from a frontier region from a border state or border region to a gateway to the Southeast Asia. That means it is, we no longer consider it as a frontier region. We see it as a gateway 
to the southeast asia that means connectivity to the southeast asia that is through that is done through this region and the author says we have come up with the look east policies and now the act east policy so these policies they have the potential to end this region's economic isolation so always we talk about that the problem of this region is economic isolation geographically also we are isolated but if we see it as a gateway to the southeast asia then the economic isolation it can be broken it can be turned into a production hub that means manufacturing hub and a transit point that means where from where goods and people they can move freely it can be a transit point so yahan ki jo economic isolation hai usko hum dur kar sakte hain agar hum isko dekhe as a gate to southeast asia and it can turn this place into a production hub into a manufacturing hub and into a transit point where goods and people can freely move so lekin uske liye kya zarurat hoga yahan ke logo ko change karni padegi apni mentality okay unko apne dimag se jo dar hai wo nikalna padega suspicion nikalna padega of the outsiders so need, so they need to shed this fear the indigenous people they need to shed their fear and suspicion of the outsiders and they should confidently negotiate with them they should confidently negotiate with these new forces of capital and labor and instead of stoking so what do you mean by stoking stoking is adding fuel to the fire so who is adding fuel to the fire here basically the political class who have their own interest okay so the author is saying that the political class who is actually stoking the situation who is actually stoking the nativist indigenous people's sentiments they should take the lead in fact and they should prepare the ground so that this region's geographical location it could become an advantage for them so they should not be stoking the sentiments of the indigenous people the political class should become a leader they should lead and they should take advantage of this geographical location so this was the article regarding assam and the northeast region the next article is not acting east so basically again uh, our policy of act east ठीक है दिस आर्टिकल इज टॉकिंग अबाउट दैट सो वी नो रिसेंटली लास्ट वीक देर वॉज अ मीटिंग ऑफ ए आर एफ दैट इज द एशियान रीजनल फोरम एंड इट ब्रिंग्स टूगेदर ऑल द मेजर पावर्स टू प्रमोट द पीस एंड प्रोस्पेरिटी इन दिस रीजन ओके एंड इट वॉज हेल्ड इन सिंगापुर सो वॉट दे टॉक्ड अबाउट दे ऑल्सो अंडरलाइन दैट देर हैज बीन अ कंटिन्यूइंग स्ट्रगल फॉर देम टू डील विद द चैलेंजेस विच हैज बीन पोस्ट बाय यू एस एंड चाइना why because us and china they are at logger heads okay the cross fire between washington that is us and beijing that is china that has been seen in this region so no other region in the world is so badly caught in the cross fire between beijing and usa than this southeast asia so there has been sino us confrontation in this area of 10 asian members that is association of southeast asian nations i have made a video on asian please go and watch that we will get a better clarity about what region we are talking about so what the author is saying here so author is saying that us has been asian's leading economic partner for decades so economically also asian jo hai unko help kar raha tha america plus jo is region mein principal provider of security tha wo bhi usa hi tha and that led to extended period of stability to is region mein kafi der tak stability rahi hai ठीक है बिकॉज यूएस जो है वो इकोनॉमिक पार्टनर भी था एशियान का एंड इट वाज आल्सो प्रोवाइडिंग सिक्योरिटी बट नाउ वी हैव अ राइजिंग चाइना एंड दिस चाइना इज ट्राइंग टू इक्लिप्स द अमेरिकन कमर्शियल डोमिनेशन दैट मींस इकोनॉमिकली आल्सो they are rising in this region and they are also challenging the america's military primacy or supremacy in this region so this period of stability has actually ended and it can lead to instability if the countries which are involved in this region does not take a step and in fact these asian countries they are also looking at india to actually come forward and play their part in the economic and the strategic interest involved in the region so asian is expecting india to provide a measure of economic blast that means economic support and a strategic balance in these difficult circumstances so asian is looking at india with hopeful eyes but again india has not been doing so good with its words and the gap 
between Delhi's promise and delivery, it remains large. So we recently also discussed that what India is promising, it is not delivering. Even in the case of the African continent, our promises and our delivery, there has been a big gap and this gap we are not filling and because of that, China is also coming in the African region and now again, here also in the Asian region, in the Southeast Asian nations, again the promise and delivery, the gap remains. We are not filling that gap and again China is filling um, the gap through its own interventions. So the author says that because the trade war, it is going on between America and China, it is escalating day by day. So ASEAN has put special emphasis on the RCEP agreement. So RCEP agreement is Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, but it has not been yet signed. It has been under negotiation for many years. So although India has formally committed to bringing the RCEP talks to a close, but still there has been many issues which remain to be resolved and therefore we need the highest level of political intervention in Delhi so that India should not be left out of what promises to be one of the biggest trading blocks of the world. So RCEP is definitely a good option for India and if it wants that it should not be left out by the Asian countries then it should immediately and urgently resolve the issues which needs to be resolved and for that highest level of political intervention will be required by Delhi. So the next author says that US is also mounting pressure on China through its new Indo-Pacific strategy. So we know increasingly this term Indo-Pacific is used instead of the Asia-Pacific. So basically why the policy makers they are focusing on Indo-Pacific because they have now included India in this region also. That means enhanced role of India in this region. That's why Indo-Pacific policy. So US has also mounted pressure on China through its Indo-Pacific policy. It has shown that India will have a more active role Okay, so that's why Beijing has also shown a little more flexibility. Earlier China was very rigid and it was not moving from its position, okay, and it was not solving its maritime territorial disputes it has with the Southeast Asian nations. Okay, but now it is showing a little more flexibility towards its Asian neighbors in solving these maritime territorial disputes. And the author says now China is also talking about the code of conduct which has been talked about for nearly two decades now code of conduct to be implemented in the South China Sea. So China has agreed to that and ASEAN and China, they have agreed to start negotiations on this code of conduct in the South China Sea on the basis of a common draft text. So the author says, see the actual agreement, the actual code of conduct might take years. But again, China is winning some diplomatic brownie points. That means China is winning in its diplomacy. Because see, agreement has not yet come into force, but the countries will see, say that, okay, China is being a little more flexible and it is talking on the issues. It's ready to bring a code of conduct in the South China Sea. So that's a positive point for China and it can do more investment in the Asian neighbors. In fact, China has also conducted its first ever maritime exercise with the 10 Asian countries last week in Singapore. Okay, so it has also conducted this maritime exercise which was the first ever uh, joint maritime exercise with the 10 Asian countries. Apart from that, China's arms sales that has also been rising to this region and India India see India has a long tradition of defense and security cooperation with ASEAN as compared to China. But again, as we are talking about acting east, but we are not actually acting east, okay? There has been a gap between our promise and our delivery. And that is actually very important that we should plug this gap and it must be a high priority for our government if we want that we should have a say in this region and if we want that China should not dominate this region. So we want to plug this gap between our promise and delivery and the next article also is regarding this only that just like we are dealing with the Chinese rise in the Indian Ocean similarly in the South Pacific Ocean okay South Pacific Silk Roads so both of these articles are related one came yesterday one came today 
so this article is also saying now see previous article it uh, focused on india the role of india in this southeast asia now this article is saying that not only india but also some other countries like australia and new zealand they are also feeling the heat they are also feeling that china's ambitions they are rising and now they are finding it difficult to cope up because earlier they took it for granted that you know china can't increase their power in this area so much but now when china is doing that this is a threat to both australia and new zealand and now they are coming in confrontation with china and this article again also suggests the role of india in this region so this article says that we will have limited resources लिमिटेड रिसोर्सेज ही रहेंगे हमारे पास रिसोर्सेज बढ़ने वाले नहीं है लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं है कि हम इस रीजन में इन्वेस्ट ना करें सो वी शुड इन्वेस्ट इन दिस रीजन डिस्पाइट आर लिमिटेड रिसोर्सेज बिकॉज अगर हम नहीं करेंगे तो डेफिनेटली चाइना जो है वो डोमिनेट करने लग जाएगा एंड ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड न्यूजीलैंड भी अब यही कर रहे हैं एक्चुअली सो लेट्स यू सी वट द आर्टिकल सेज सो द आर्टिकल स्टार्ट बाई सेंग दैट इंडिया इज नॉट द ओनली वन विच इज स्ट्रगलिंग to cope with china silk road ambitions down under australia and new zealand they are also fighting this dominance of china in the south pacific region so now all the three that is india new zealand and australia they are scrambling to deal with china's projection of economic and political power into their backyard so first they take it for granted they didn't knew that china was coming in their backyards but now they are feeling the heat now they know that china is projecting itself as an economic and political power in their regions and now they are in confrontation with china so the author says that the trend lines were quite similar like delhi had concerns about strategic implications of the china's port building in gwadar pakistan so we know china is building its base uh, gwadar port in pakistan and hambantota port in sri lanka so we have concerns about that we have also concern about the land route also that's the cpec china pakistan economic corridor okay because we say that it's hurting our sovereignty but again in this case we are also concerned that you know uh, if you have heard about the string of pearls that china is trying to contain india from every side and that's why these ports like gwadar pakistan and hambantota sri lanka they have been made similarly now they have done in the south pacific region where china is pushing for a military facility in i don't know how to pronounce it um it's one out to okay so it's basically a small nation which is located northeast of australia and its population is barely 250000 people and it has 80 islands which generate a massive exclusive economic zone so do you understand the economic perspective of it they have a large exclusive economic zone bahut bada jo area hai wo exclusive economic zone ka hai iska matlab resources wahan pe utne hi zyada honge aur china ab kya kar raha hai apna jo military facility hai wo yahan pe is jagah mein create kar raha hai theek hai that means it will have access to the resources of this massive exclusive economic zone and it can extract it potentially aur plus military facility to वो क्रिएट कर ही रहा है सो बोथ स्ट्रेटेजिक एज वेल एज इकोनॉमिक थ्रेट फॉर ऑस्ट्रेलिया बिकॉज दिस नेशन दिस कंट्री इज लोकेटेड नॉर्थ ईस्ट ऑफ ऑस्ट्रेलिया सो द ऑथर से इज दैट चाइना इज राइजिंग प्रोफाइल इन द साउथ पेसिफिक आईलैंड इट इज नॉट वेरी डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इट्स इंटरेस्ट इन द इंडियन ओशन तो इंडिया में भी वही है चाइना कर रहा है और साउथ पेसिफिक में भी वही कर रहा है इंडिया के केस में मतलब जो नेबरिंग कंट्रीज हैं जैसे कि पाकिस्तान श्रीलंका वहां भी पोर्ट्स क्रिएट किए जा रहे हैं ऑस्ट्रेलिया के केस में यहाँ बनाता हूँ वहां पर क्रिएट किए जा रहे हैं so uh, it it is growing its interest in the uh, neighboring islands especially if we say in indian ocean uh, the islands of madagascar mauritius seychelles maldives may be काफी सारा इन्वेस्टमेंट किया है चाइना ने एंड श्रीलंका ऑफ कोर्स सो सी ऑल द ग्रेट मैरिटाइम पावर्स दे सीक फॉरवर्ड बेसिस दैट मींस इफ यू वांट दैट योर मैरिटाइम पावर योर पावर ऑन द सी दैट शुड बी ग्रेट देन यू शुड हैव बेसिस इन मेनी कंट्रीज राइट इन मेनी फॉरवर्ड कंट्रीज सो दैट्स व्हाट चाइना इज आल्सो डूइंग इट हैज आल्सो अ बेस इन दिजी बाउती व्हिच इज इन द हॉर्न ऑफ अफ्रीका एंड दिस वन इज अ फर्स्ट फॉर बीजिंग सो द China's base in Diji Bauti. Just look at uh, the map here. So these are the four countries which are included in the Horn of Africa. So the first one is Somalia. The second is Ethiopia. 
the third one is erythria and the fourth one is dijibuti and if we see in a clockwise direction to iska ek acronym banta hai seed okay s e e d okay clockwise direction mein that is somalia ethiopia erythria and dijibuti so dijibuti mein china ne apna military base jo hai wo create kiya hai and it's part of the horn of africa and it's a first for beijing and of course every great maritime power it needs some forward bases and beijing is doing just that and that's why this base has also been created and the author says that china had not hidden its intentions from the starting it has said that we are ambitious and we want to develop further we want to develop beyond our boundaries beyond our periphery in the far west and the southwest and of course the emphasis they talked about was promoting massive connectivity projects within china as well as extending them across the border into the neighboring countries and soon after beijing also unveiled a bold naval strategy so earlier they were talking only about the connectivity projects on land but now they gave a bold naval strategy which was of course in tune with its emergence because it's going to be the world's second largest economy just so the point is that it has not hidden its intentions but we were not taking serious that you know china will increase its presence or increase its power so much so the author says now china is not only confined to its borders okay so china is not only confined to its own borders now it has begun to develop maritime infrastructure around the world including in india's immediate neighborhood which is our concern of course and it is also creating the military and other capabilities to secure its globally dispersed interest and now the author talks about some of the projects that china is bringing towards the subcontinent and these include the tibet railway then modernization of the karakoram highway and building the strategic ports like gawadar port in pakistan and hambantota in sri lanka so basically china is engaging itself on many fronts and it is engaging in the military fronts also on the economic fronts also it's giving economic aids to the small nations and of course they need money like it is investing in maldives maldives need money if india is will not give the money then they will go to china right so india needs to see that it its interest they are not hurt by china so the author says that uh, china did not had hidden intentions it came out with clear intentions and it said that okay we are going to dominate this region militarily and economically and we will do this by our connectivity program but the author says the real problem was the inability of delhi that is india canberra that is australia and wellington that is new zealand to appreciate china's entirely legitimate aspirations to become a great global power so why legitimate aspirations because obviously we know that China is economically growing it has a great amount of foreign exchange and if you have great amount of foreign exchange if you are sound economically then automatically this feeling of dominating the region it comes in your mind you want to be the global power so that's what china's aspirations were but we could not apprehend their aspirations and we could not assess what were the strategic consequences for our own respective regions so here we are talking about the three that is india new zealand and australia so the author says earlier we were not confronting china but and especially if we talk about india then it was only in the summer of 2017 when china was putting a great pressure on india that we should attend the first belt and road forum but india clearly he said that we have concerns and it criticized the beijing's infrastructure projects in his in its neighborhood therefore this was the first time we openly criticized it and again it is only a few months that government of australia and new zealand they have also started publicly questioning china's motivations in the south pacific region so what are the problems basically it can unravel the regional order okay stability jo hai wo khatre mein aa sakti hai and it can also threaten the new zealand's security okay security jo hai see when you are giving some economic aid what you are doing is you are putting that person in debt and if they are not able to give back the money supposed to china then they will be trapped in an unsustainable uh, debt that is the debt trap we call it jaise 
सपोज आपने किसी से पैसे उधार लिए ठीक है आप जो है उसको पे नहीं कर पा रहे क्योंकि आपकी इनकम इतनी नहीं है तो क्या होगा उन, उसको पे करने के लिए आप और लोन लोगे उनसे ठीक है क्योंकि कोई और दे नहीं रहा है तो आप उन्हीं से और लोन लोगे उन्हीं को पे करने के लिए पुराने लोन पे करने के लिए ठीक है लेकिन जो नया वाला लोन लिया उसके ऊपर भी आपको इंटरेस्ट पड़ रहा है उसका भी आपको पैसा देना है तो अल्टीमेटली आप एक डेप्ट ट्रैप में फंस जाओगे तो वही चाइना इन छोटे नेशंस के साथ करता है बेसिकली एंड अल्टीमेटली देयर सोवरानिटी कम्स एट रिस्क बिकॉज अगर आप इकोनॉमिकली स्ट्रॉन्ग नहीं हो देन योर सोवरानिटी इज डेफिनेटली एट रिस्क सो चाइना इज डूइंग द सेम ओके चाइना इज ट्रैपिंग दी स्मॉल नेशन इन टू द डेप ट्रैप ओके अनसस्टेनेबल डेप्ट आउटकम्स एंड दैट्स वाई देयर सोवरानिटी इज इन डेंजर सो दे नीड टू हैव सस्टेनेबल इकोनॉमीज सो दॉथर सेज दैट यू नो ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड now they are opening up earlier they were not giving uh, financial aid to these small nations okay these small island nations but now australia and new zealand they are opening up and they are giving economic aid to these island nations so that they should not be trapped in the debt of china and in fact australia and new zealand they are also preparing for a wide range security pact with the south pacific nations so that they could uh, they should not look for the security in china so they are doing all these steps but the author says that uh, even if they are doing such step china australia new zealand india they are coming forward but china will not give up okay and in fact it is hosting a second summit with the leaders of pacific island nations in पन विनी ऑन द मार्जिन ऑफ एपेक्स समिट इन नवंबर तो नवंबर में एक और समिट जो है वो चाइना कंडक्ट कर रहा है तो चाइना हार नहीं मानेगा ऑस्ट्रेलिया न्यूजीलैंड जो है वो ऑलरेडी आगे आ रहे हैं एंड दे आर इन्वेस्टिंग इन दी स्मॉल आइलैंड नेशन दे आर गिविंग दम सिक्योरिटी ताकि वो चाइना के डेप ट्रैप में ना फंसे सो दैट दे शुड नॉट नीड सिक्योरिटी फ्रॉम चाइना एंड इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इंडिया द ऑथर सेज अवर रिसोर्स इंडियाज रिसोर्स इट विल ऑलवेज बी लिमिटेड बिकॉज वी आर अ डेवलपिंग कंट्री वी कैन डिनाई दिस फैक्ट but again if we want to increase our impact in this region then we have to collaborate collaborate with whom collaborate with our partner countries like australia new zealand who have similar interest who have similar stake in the south pacific nation so basically we have to collaborate with the partner countries like australia france indonesia japan new zealand and us because they have similar stake they have also great stake in the pacific region and their security is also in danger so the author is saying ki india ke resources hamesha limited rahenge लेकिन इससे हमें खुद को नहीं रोकना चाहिए चाहे किसी के साथ कोलैबोरेट करके कर लो ठीक है इन्वेस्ट लेकिन करो जरूर बिकॉज हमारे भी काफी सारे स्टेक्स हैं और इन कंट्रीज के भी स्टेक्स हैं सो दे विल बी मोर देन रेडी टू हेल्प अस एंड दे विल बी मोर देन रेडी टू जॉइन अस इन दीज इनिशिएटिव्स so we should ensure practical cooperation with these nations that could be actually far more productive than delhi's theological discussions theological discussions that means that is only on paper we are only discussing it nothing is happening on ground and that is theological discussions these are happening about quad indo pacific and the belt and road initiative so the author suggests that we should do some practical work on ground work in these nations rather than just talking about rather than just having some vague ideas about quad and the indo pacific region and all that so we should just practically cooperate we should give them some practical results okay and we should bridge the gap between our promises and our deliveries so that's what what is required on india's part so this was the article regarding uh, the rising of china and how india and other countries can cope up with the rise of china i hope you like the lecture and if you do then please 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 do subscribe to my channel and thank you for listening have a good day